I have six things that you absolutely need to master to reduce your gardening bill. If you're starting out with a low budget or you're just simply looking to garden in an SHTF scenario, for anyone who does not know what that is, prepper, end of the world, you know, that sort of thing. We're in the clock to try to beat a tornado combined with a, a thunderstorm. So let's just get to it. The last two are probably the most important, but let's go over the first four and you aren't gonna learn this stuff overnight. You're not gonna just snap your fingers, wake up one morning and say, I know how to do all these four. I personally haven't even achieved that sort of level of gardening where my input costs are so low that I'm gardening at a basically a zero. So number one, hands down is gray water. So if you don't know what gray water is, gray water is referencing any sort of water that is a waste water, meaning from your laundry, from your dishwasher, from a bath, a shower, figuring out of how to use this is so important if you're going through a drought. If you have a water main break, like the folks in Calgary, I have a video on gray water and exactly what to use, why to use it, and sometimes even why it's more beneficial than just using tap water. And that's where kind of the second part of this comes. You have gray water, obviously, but you also have the ability to capture water. So having some form of water storage on a large scale. It, it, trust me, you want to figure that out. It is a lifesaver. Number two is actually seed saving. So the reason why this is so important is twofold. Obviously, if you can seed save, you have an endless supply of seeds. It builds up my personal seed bank, but it also gives me plants that are better and engineered to my environment. You live in a cold climate. What you want to do is look for the plants that are performing the best in your area. So last year we had a drought year very hot, very dry. I selected the plants that did the best, performed with the highest yields, the greatest produce delivery, taste, flavor, texture, you name it. I tagged those plants off. I saved the seeds from the produce of those plants. And then I marked down on them 2023, drought, hot, and then whatever plant it is and the characteristic I was going for when I grabbed that. Several videos on how to do this, so go check that out, but absolute must. I think if you asked a lot of gardeners, they would tell you that their highest cost input nowadays is actually the seeds because seeds prices have just absolutely skyrocketed um, ever since COVID, like after COVID. Okay, the next one is IDing pests. So not all times you can figure out the solution to the pest, but at least being able to identify them and determine when it's dangerous and when we actually need to intervene, if you will. When I reference pests, I am using the agronomist definition for that. So that does include fungus, bacteria, insects, and weeds that somehow affect the production or the performance of the plants. I actually heavily encourage you to take a photo of that bug because it may look different through a camera versus when you Google it, for example. You want to take the photo, put it in your garden journal and reference it, how you got rid of it, what it did, if it was good, bad, you name it, and any other details that apply because if you don't have access to the internet, say there's like no Wi-Fi around, whatever the case is, having that reference is much easier. Books are great, they're wonderful, don't get me wrong, but your own personal, personal garden journal is more beneficial because unfortunately books, they might have one or two photos and these one or two photos may or may not help you identify. Whereas your phone, you can take so many different angles. You can write down specifically where it was in the garden, um, what plants it was on, all. If I die, it was nice knowing a geek crew. So definitely, we're gonna have to speed this up. Same thing with funguses, bacteria, as you name it. Keep in mind, the rule is nature tax. Nature tax is 30%. It's the same tax as Justin Trudeau's. The rule is that you can very safely maintain a crop so long as the nature tax is below 30% of said plant. Once it begins to get over 30% or close to 30%, it's time for you to intervene because things may turn south very quickly for that plant at their yield, performance, et cetera, and so forth. So the next one is everyone's favorite and that is composting. I desperately need to do a video on composting in Canada 
because there are so many ways to compost that don't involve just a classic bin that's going to most definitely freeze in the winter. There is worm bins. There is literally digging it into the ground. Fish ponds, all of these are additional nutrients you can plop into your system. That one like, I don't know if you saw my face, but that like lit up the sky. Okay, anyways, I actually love thunderstorms, so I hope it rains on me, because that'd be so much fun. Not the camera. The camera cannot get rained on, but me, myself, and I can. If you live in a rural space or in a place that has a lot of urban hood rats, such as raccoons, actual rats, mice, any sort of vermin, if you will, you want to think about what you're putting into your compost because eggs, for example, can increase the attractiveness uh, of your garden, compost, and or where you place the compost to birds, mice, rats, you name it. But the second most important absolute must accomplish, if you will, and that is experimenting. There is way, way too much, in my humble opinion, way too much dogmatic gardening methods out there. They're useless to you. The purpose of gardening is actually shockingly enough to have fun and try different things the geek crew who's the community that you'll find in the comments down below and if you want to join the geek crew just so you know you hit the subscribe button and then you just start making friends in the comment section they've accepted me into their group as like someone who can interject every once in a while but they both definitely lead the show experimenting seriously it's very very important to put it in perspective i have i'm just going to turn the camera behind me there are four different versions of planters. Each one has different bottoms in them. Wood, leaves, compost, soil. And I planted them all identically because I truly do want to figure out what is the best way. I don't want to just blanket tell you, put straight soil in because that's the only way to go. I want to see if there's an actual inherent difference between what the bottom half of your medium may be. Now, that doesn't have to be the form of testing you do. The other form of testing or experimenting you could do is the depth in which you plant your tomatoes. Very controversial issue, never would have thought that, but anyways. So the rule of the channel and the comment section and anything that involves me anyways, is that there's no such thing as a stupid question. There's no such thing as a stupid experiment. Go do what you want because that is the point of the channel and the point of gardening. Ultimately speaking, when you experiment, you find things that work and some things may work better for you than they would for someone else. So just because I tell you to do something does not mean it's going to work in your area. Furthermore, my backyard versus my front yard, very, two very different gardening situations just because of sun. So definitely something to think about, which leads me into my last and seriously, my most important, and that is community. So when I say this, I mean, find someone locally and it doesn't have to be groups. These communities don't have to be clubs or elite whatever, because most of the time those are eh anyways. But what it could mean is having neighbors that you communicate with and share ideas and downfalls, what they're doing to protect against XYZ pest in the neighborhood. Great example of this is my neighbor across the street planted garlic. I have garlic in the front yard. He walked over and he said, how'd your garlic do this year? And I said, well, my, it was really low germination. I didn't get much that actually showed up. I think the winter kind of killed a lot of it off because we didn't have a lot of snow cover. Turns out he had the same problem. So instead of him getting discouraged about his first time gardening with garlic, he, he was able to realize that you know what, this just isn't a garlic year. The other one is just even my neighbor on the other side, I've gotten them addicted to gardening too. You're welcome, Beth and Jordan. They've shared ideas and that is a better community in my opinion than a horticultural society that you pay you know, $50 a year for. Not saying that those aren't valuable, they are, but um, <laughs> the comment section of this video is going to have a ton of Geek Crew members. They are going to tell you what zone they're from, where they're from, and kind of what issues they've had, their tips and tricks, you name it. And that doesn't go for just this video, you guys. The Geek Crew is a very powerful resource that actually shows up to every single video. And in the context of that video, will literally do that. They will say, I'm from Illinois. I garden in an urban environment. This is say, we're talking about, you know, tomato planting depth. They will say, this is the depth I planted my tomatoes. These are the things I've noticed. You need to listen to them before you listen to me or any other influencer out there. So 
I want to thank you guys so much for taking my six tips. Gingers, this is our temperature, our lighting spectrum. So I'm probably going to hang outside in this rainstorm for a little while because I can't burn in it and I don't have to put a bunch of chemical sunscreen on myself. So that's a win. I'm going to pop that gray water video up here because I do think that is going to be very valuable to a lot of you. And this video down here is actually what Google thinks you should watch based on what your search has been. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know how we're not, oh, that's how we're not, this is how we're not getting poured. I was like, how are we not getting like poured on like the rest of the yard? We're literally, we're protected. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.